Well, hey everybody, we've got that funk, and I just wanted to say, you know, I don't think I've mentioned yet on this channel that I'm the new Thursday host over on The Breakfast Club. Uh, we now have a full roster of seven hosts for seven days, uh, starting off with Dev Shell 2 on Sunday, then Infidel Avenger on Monday, Steve Shives on Tuesday, um, Serious Mind on Wednesday, myself on Thursdays, Tainted Liberal on Fridays, and The Peach on Saturdays. Um, Thursday's video of mine, if you haven't already seen it, uh, I'll link in the description box. It uh, discusses an aspect uh, <clears throat> in the aftermath of the uh, terrorist attack in Paris the other day. Anyway, um, this video isn't about that per se, but this video uh, I think is important uh, in the wake of that video and in the wake of things I've said in comment sections since then on other videos. But um, the, uh, the bottom line is, I, uh, I think this sort of attitude that I'm going to read out to you right now is, is a very commonly held one, and I wanted to respond to it as someone to whom it's directed at, because I think those of us who call ourselves liberal, whether we, I don't necessarily call myself a liberal, I don't necessarily identify myself as a liberal, but I recognize that other people identify me as a liberal, therefore I guess, you know, whatever, the shoe fits, right? But, um, so those of us who are liberal, uh, you know, we get accused of this kind of thing quite often, and I think it's important to respond to it as earnestly as possible. So here we go. Rakhem Matt says, I don't see how someone can support a religious Muslim and claim to be for liberal principles such as women's rights, gay rights, freedom of speech, and multiculturalism. This is what I don't understand about some liberals. They apply double standards, and they also give a free pass to minorities to be as bigoted as they want. That is why I would no longer call myself a liberal. The logic is correct, but the practice is too much of a contradiction. And then he goes on to say that uh, the bad stuff in Islam is far, far worse than my roommate's intolerance, which is something I mentioned in the video. Anyway, at the time I responded, I'm not a fan of Islam, and I'm not a fan of racists. I, I have to tolerate both because I have no choice. And I think this is important to bring up. Um, I'm going to now respond more properly because I think his question is a good one and I think it deserves a proper response. So I'm going to go sentence by sentence and respond at, at one at a time because I think uh, now that I've given you the whole overall context it's worth picking apart a bit. I don't see how someone can support a religious Muslim and claim to be for liberal principles such as women's rights, gay rights, freedom of speech, and multiculturalism. All right. Uh, I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of belief, freedom of thought. Uh, belief is a kind of thought, and uh, speech is the expression of a belief or thought. Uh, so I think they're all intertwined, and uh, you can't have uh, one without the other, three, other two kind of a thing. Uh, so there's one thing just as a principle, uh, you know. And second of all, women's rights, gay rights, I believe in equal rights for all human beings regardless of uh, everything, you know, uh, we should all basically have the same rights and uh, where religion gets in the way of that I object and I, doesn't, I don't make any distinction whether the religion in question is Christian or Muslim or whatever else uh, if it gets in the way of those things then I've got a problem with that, of course I do uh, why would I say I don't? Uh, uh, but I don't necessarily have a problem with Muslims. Uh, it's the application of Islam that I have a problem with, and that varies from different parts of the world. Uh, you know, I find it abhorrent what happens in some part of the uh, Muslim world. You know, I think there's absolutely no excuse whatsoever for corporal punishment. If people get lashes in the square or amputated, or if people get stoned for whatever reason, there's no reason good enough to stone someone to death. You know, are you kidding? That's barbaric, and, and I'm not ashamed or afraid to say so. But I don't think most Muslims uh, really, really in their hearts want to behave like that, you know. Uh, so, you know, I think, uh, especially in Western countries, and, if, you know, that's another issue. I believe in freedom uh, for all human beings, but I especially believe it in, in the countries that I come from, in the country that I live in. Um, and I, I want to make sure that uh, that freedom is extended to all of us. If it's not extended to all of us, including the religious, then it's not fair. It's as simple as that. Uh, and also, with the freedom of belief and the freedom of speech comes the responsibility of tolerance. 
if I want the freedom to do what I want as long as I don't hurt anybody else, I have to be prepared to extend that same exact freedom to everybody else, otherwise mine isn't valid. So, as long as their practice of their religion isn't harming me or the society, I have no right to object to it. Simple as that to me, you know. Um, I think there are exceptions to that. For example, uh, I don't think you should be allowed in court if you can't show your face. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that's a topic for a different discussion, really. But the bottom line is, that's where I draw the line. See, I think that freedom of thought includes freedom of belief. And uh, as long as these people aren't hurting us, we shouldn't object. It's when they try to interfere in legislation or education, when they show up at your door, and try and convert you, that kind of thing. Yeah, I object to that. Absolutely. Religion, spirituality, in general for that matter, should be a private affair in my opinion. In my opinion, we should not allow the religious of whatever stripe to think arbitrarily that their religion is more important and higher than the law that we all have to obey. Simple. And the highest of those laws is that we're all equal under the law. That equality has to extend to belief or it's not worth the paper it's written on. That's my opinion. Second of all, he says, this is what I don't understand about some liberals. They apply double standards. Well, as I hope I've just explained, I don't really see it as a double standard. I see it as the standard. If I'm going to apply freedom, then I have to apply it to the religious as well under the under the proviso that the exercise of your freedom doesn't impinge on others. That's the proviso, and I don't make an exception for that. Where religion steps over that line, I have objected. I always object. You know, I think that's wrong, and I don't make any distinction which religion steps over what that line. Whether it's people trying to prevent gay marriage in America, or people who promote stoning for adultery in the Eastern countries. There's no reason for it. Uh, uh, that, that type of behavior, or you know, honor killings, that kind of thing. There's no reason for it. It, should, it shouldn't be allowed. Uh, religion's no excuse. Culture's no excuse. Uh, the political situation is no excuse. One of the only reasons we tolerate these things from uh, various different countries in the, to the level and degree and for the extent of time that we have done is because we depend on a lot of these countries in a geopolitical sense. It's as simple as that. I think uh, they would be quietly forgotten otherwise. Uh, and I think as far as um, Muslims living in the West are concerned, I think it's a different kettle of fish. I don't think most of them hold to those values. Otherwise, they wouldn't have left those countries. So, that's, that's, that's my opinion. I also believe quite strongly, I know plenty of Muslims uh, when I lived in Cornwall, uh, who, you know, they didn't dress in Muslim attire at all. Uh, a lot of the guys I knew who were of Turkish origin, you know, they go out and get pissed or do drugs all the time. Uh, sleep with women they weren't married with, etc., etc. You know, they weren't any different than anybody else I knew, you know. Uh, so I don't really make these sort of this whole idea that there's such a thing as a, as a true Muslim. I've known plenty of Muslims who, uh, you know, you wouldn't know they're Muslim if, unless you unless you they've told you, which they will, if you ask them. <laughs> but otherwise, they don't. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, but some of them do dress in Muslim attire, and that's a different issue. I don't necessarily see a problem with that, as long as, like I said, there are certain exceptions: banks, school, uh, court, that kind of thing. Uh, you should always have to show your face in certain places, in my opinion. Um, that's just my opinion, though, and uh, I think it's right. But I can understand that some people don't. However, uh, I think, you know, we should try to apply the same law equally to everybody, and if I can't go in wearing a balaclava uh, for understandable reasons, then they shouldn't be allowed to go in covering their face. Okay, so, see, I'm a liberal, yeah, sure, but I do draw lines. There aren't double standards here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we've got a long way to go, uh, but what we're not going to do is solve the problems that uh, these extremists are creating by polarizing our community, by, by ostracizing the Muslims among us. We drive them away from us and into each other. They become insular. It's not going to solve any problems. 
if we want these people to modernize and reform their religion, which is the necessary way forward if we're going to solve this problem, it can only be solved from within Islam. There's nothing those of us on the outside can do but watch and wait and hope. Or we can create an atmosphere where we encourage these people to rise up and speak out, not just against these atrocities, but basically modernize their world, including the Muslim-majority countries. We need to modernize this world to the point where uh, corporal punishment is a thing of the past, to where torture no longer exists, and to where women have equal rights to men around the globe completely. Uh, things like that. Homosexuals have equal rights. Of course these things matter. Of course they do. And uh, I'm not for one second saying that they don't. But in Western countries where those problems don't exist so much and Muslims exist in Western countries, as long as they're not hurting anybody practicing their religion, I can't see a problem with it. Simple as that. Sorry about the uh, weird edit there. I know uh, basically I lost the daylight. I had to take a quick break and when I came back it was too dark. So here we are. Anyway, right, let me get back to answering the questions here or the points being made. Uh, he says about liberals, they also give a free pass to minorities to be as bigoted as they want. Uh, I object to that. Absolutely. I disagree completely. No, I fucking don't. Uh, this liberal anyway definitely doesn't do that. I don't think it's okay for uh, racism to be <laughs> uh, it, it to exist, much less be expressed openly. Having said that, I recognize that it's going to happen, and uh, you know when I feel I ought to or can, I definitely speak out against it. Uh, sometimes to great opprobrium from the people I'm speaking to. Uh, nevertheless, uh, certain things I just won't let fly, and that's just it. It doesn't really matter to me what ethnicity someone is and towards what ethnicity they're spewing their bile. If, if someone's behaving in a racist way or uh, making racist remarks, I object to that. Uh, sometimes uh, out loud, um, but always in principle, I object to it. Absolutely always. Um, you know, being of an ethnic minority uh, doesn't insulate someone from responsibility for their actions or what they say you know and if they're being racist they're being racist and that's just unacceptable really um, I say unacceptable because it's unacceptable in principle the fact is whether I like it or not uh, I have to tolerate racism to a certain degree because there is always going to be racists in my world that's an unfortunate fact and you know, as time goes on, thankfully, it seems to be less and less and less. Every new generation seems a little bit less racist than the one that preceded it. And that's a trend that I hope continues. And I think overall, that's the only way that uh, this situation is ever going to amend itself. But it's already been far too long in the making, and we're still not there. So I'm not overly optimistic about the, uh, the likelihood of success in my lifetime about overcoming racist issues and stuff. But the bottom line is I don't care what direction racism comes from. It's wrong to uh, treat someone in an arbitrary way based on uh, their heritage or their ethnicity or whatever way you want to call racism. Uh, you know, I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. So no, there's no free pass. Uh, there's no get out of jail free card either. Um, you know, I, I tolerate racists if I have to, um, but I prefer not to. And so I sort of oscillate between the only two choices that uh, life actually gives me. I can either tolerate racism um, and racists and live amongst it, or I can try to isolate myself from it. Those are the only two choices that I've got. Um, you know, what you can't do is eliminate them, you know? So, you know, you have to tolerate them, unfortunately. It, it, it isn't really a choice. Uh, so. That's all I can really say about that. Uh, you go on to say that uh, you can't call yourself a liberal anymore. And, you know, if you're not comfortable with the label, I'm certainly not going to try and sell it to you because I'm not comfortable with labels in general. It just seems to be the label that cl most closely fits uh, my perspective. I'm actually uh, quite a contradiction when it comes to uh, certain things that I believe, you know. Um, and I'm not really going to go into it because it's not the place. Suffice to say that. Uh, if you don't want to be called a liberal, 
don't call yourself a liberal. Or whether or not uh, you think that my position as a liberal is contradictory, I'll have to wait for you to tell me. I hope that I've explained it in such a way that it doesn't come across as a contradiction. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a mistake if you're assuming that uh, we liberals don't draw lines or have limits uh, or, you know, uh, we, we basically think that everybody should be allowed what they want without restriction. Uh, obviously, that's not the case. And I've never heard anybody advocate for that ever. Um, so there, that's my two cents. I hope I've explained it a little bit better for you. And I want to thank you all for putting up with this exceptionally long video. Mostly, uh, I don't make videos this long, but... Uh, this topic, I think, merited it, especially now. So thanks again for watching, and I, if I don't know, um, hopefully I'll make another video this weekend, but if I don't get time for that, I'll definitely be back on the YouTube for my Thursday edition of The Breakfast Club. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.